Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Walker Ford, and as you can see, I'm a happy camper because I have two 2020 Shelby products. We have a 2020 Shelby GT350R, and then we have the all new, first time back since 2014, the Shelby GT500. But let's talk a little bit about Shelby history before we get into these two snakes behind me. First Shelby GT350 came out in 1965. Carroll Shelby doing his magic with the Ford Mustang. In 1967, things changed. We still had the GT350, but that was the first year of the GT500. Now, by 1970, both models had disappeared. They've come back in their different ways, and today, they bring the utmost in performance when it comes to a Mustang-based Ford product. What's interesting though, is Ford could have went the easy route and made them very, very similar. And to the outside, besides the color, they may look very similar, but you look past that, there's a lot to behold that is unique to each one. So let's go ahead, dive into this whole comparison on what you think, what I think, and what everybody else thinks is the best Shelby of them all. Let's start with the 2020 iconic silver GT350R. This being the R model is going to be the full kitchen sink tossed at it plus everything else. So you're going to have the older style headlight design in both the GT350 and the GT500. This dates back to the last use in 2017 on the Mustang. All LED, the LED uh, tri-bar light inside for daytime running lamps, functional venting on each corner. Now this being an R, it actually is the lowest sitting Mustang. Very, very low, about an inch and a half lower than the standard GT350. You'll also notice the addition of this massive front splitter to give you extra downforce and also scoop more air in. Now, as we come across the iconic grill shape, you have that honeycomb grill pattern. Now for 2020, they did change the, the design of this to allow better airflow. If you notice, this whole thing is not open and it's done that way on purpose. The GT350R receives red badging along with the red pinstripe on its over the top racing stripes if the person optioned that in the stripes. There's that Shelby massive splitter gonna give us the downforce, but this one featured with the flat black racing stripes and because it's an R, that extra red. I love the addition of the splitters here in the grill, gives it a very menacing low wide look. Now when you get up onto the hood, you do have a functional heat extractor that's gonna help drag hot air out and I love the U-shape indentation with those racing stripes on the hood of the GT350. Now when we get to the 500, things are a little different. Now what's interesting is both of these are wider than the GT, the regular Mustang GT. The GT500 is just a little bit wider than the GT350. If you notice, they do have a bit of gloss black, which I am gonna zonk. I wish that they made that some type of side air curtain or something that would cool the brakes, but you have the same uh, headlight setup, LED, with the LED tri-bar. You drop down a little bit more gloss black, and then you're gonna, of course, have functional venting on each corner, just like the GT350R. This is actually a wire mesh instead of the plastic, and you'll notice that on the GT500, the, the lip spoiler, the splitter, does not extend as far, nor is the car as low. Now, when we get into that grill area, massive, large front open grill, the largest Cobra ever put on any Ford product. There's that wire mesh design, GT500 stamped right in that gloss black center section, and then also down below that same wire mesh. Now, when we go up onto the hood, you have for the first time coming back to a Ford product, actual hood pins and a massive gloss black heat extractor, that shame U-shape uh, indentation, but it's obviously raised up higher than on the GT350R. But why don't we go ahead, let's get to the sides and backs of these two Shelbys and see how they're different. All right, guys, let's take a trip around the side of the Shelby GT350R. Now, the GT350R gets carbon fiber wheels. This was the first 
normal production vehicle to get carbon fiber wheels. That is a 19 inch wheel, 305 on the width and wrapped in those extra sticky Michelin Cup 2 tires. Massive six piston Brembo caliper, the size of Ronald McDonald's head. And those rotors are 15 and a half inches in diameter, two piece to help dissipate heat. Now the carbon fiber wheel weighing less obviously lowers overall weight of the car, but that's less rotating mass, which is gonna quicken up the steering. Believe it or not, the GT350R has a lot of the suspension geometry from the GT500, believe it or not, updated for 2020, along with that wonderful MagnaRide track specific setup on the suspension. Now, as we go into the fender, I love the flared out fender. This is wider than a standard Mustang GT. This is a functional heat extractor on the side. You got your GT350 badge, that massive side sill extension that's gonna channel the air. We have the over the type stri uh, top stripes, same body lines, that Mustang Fastback, nice flared out body style. On the back though, we gotta show them this time, we have those 315s. So the rears are actually wider than the fronts. You still get four piston out back, a little bit smaller on the rear rotor, but still 315s. Because remember, this is rear wheel drive, sticky, very, very sticky, just like Hubba Bubba or Big League Chew. Another thing, of course, is that rotating mass, 373 gears out back. When we get to the rear, you have a massive carbon fiber rear spoiler. Another thing I wanna point out is, this is something I want you to notice, check out the antenna. The antenna is the older style, that's that hockey puck style. The new one does not have that, and I'll show you on that GT500, they changed it to a shark fin. But when we get to the back, you have that GT350R badge, bright red, the tri-bar taillights, and then of course you're gonna have that active exhaust where you can make it as loud as you want and piss off the whole neighborhood, that voodoo sound, 8,250 RPM. Very, very aggressive looking rear diffuser. Behind the diffuser is a diff cooler to help cool those 373 gears as you're going and doing your track day. But why don't we go ahead, let's check out that GT500 and see what it's bringing to the table. All right guys, time to take a trip around the new GT500. When we come around the bend, here's what we're working with. So this is actually a 20 inch wheel, gloss black, Still those bright red calipers. These are actually a little bit larger, still six piston, but still a, a larger caliper than what's on the GT350R. These things though, I'm telling you, they look like a pair of Michael Jordan's, Air Jordans when he used to play for the Chicago Bulls. Massive, you thought the rotors were big on that thing? This thing has 16 and a half inch rotors up front. Tires though, are not the super sticky Cup 2s. These are the Pilot Sport 4Ss. Another thing that's unique is that you have a carbon fiber drive shaft on the GT500. Underneath the fenders, that same style MagnaRide suspension, not as track focused as the GT350 are sitting over there and definitely not sitting as low. When we go into the fender, you just have nice clean fender, that Shelby badging, the Cobra, no heat extractor on the side, gloss black, one thing you'll notice is you have a longer extension on the lower sill for aerodynamic efficiency. And there's the zonk of the day on the GT500 is the addition of that shark fin antenna. I don't know what Ford is thinking, but that's not working. We work our way back. You'll notice out back, you get 315s. These are 20 inch 315s, same width as the GT350R. And you're getting a nice large four piston caliper as well. When we get to the rear, this is your GT350 wing, standard GT350 wing as on the 500. We get out back and of course we got another large Cobra, the largest ever on any production Ford Shelby product. And then down below, you're gonna get four inch exhaust, that active exhaust where you can piss off the neighbors and just let her sing. There's also special heat treatment so that you don't melt this rear diffuser. And just like on the GT350R, you have a diff cooler lurking behind to cool those 373 gears. But while we get to the best part, let's pop the hoods of these two Shelbys and see what's powering them. All right, guys, we got the hoods popped on these two Shelbys. Underneath the hood of the 2020 GT350R is gonna be that Voodoo motor. That's that flat plane crankshaft, 5.2 liter V8 pumping out 526 horsepower, 429 pound-feet of torque, 
Red line is 8,250 RPM and it has made it to that slick shifting little piece of heaven known as that Tremec six speed manual transmission. Zero to 60, if you know how to dance, you're looking at 3.9 seconds. The top speed of this Shelby GT350R is gonna be 173 miles an hour. If you're concerned about MPGs, I don't know why you're thinking about this vehicle, but 14 in the city, 21 in the highway. It's got that new steering rack from the GT500 with the revised settings and the redesigned high trail knuckle setup. The GT350R is a resonator delete over the GT350 and this GT500, so it's gonna be louder, and it's over 100 pounds lighter than the GT350. Underneath the hood of the 500, first of all, you have a hydraulic hood strut, whereas on the GT350R, I'm gonna zonk it, you have a prop rod. You do have this massive strut tower brace that looks like the Golden Gate Bridge for performance badge, and of course, that hand-built supercharged engine. That's also a 5.2 liter, but it's a conventional crankshaft setup. So you're looking at 760 horsepower, 625 pound-feet of torque. It redlines at 7,500 RPM, and it's made it to a first-time seven-speed Tremec DCT transmission. Zero to 60, 3.6 seconds, quarter mile in 10, nine and a top speed of 180 miles an hour. MPGs, 12 in the city, 18 on the highway. She's heavier though, 4,149 pounds compared to the GT350R, which is 3,703 pounds. Now what's fascinating is, is that you do get that strut tower brace, but if you notice on the GT350R, it's more of a conventional setup rather than something that looks like from a Golden Gate Bridge setup. I think underneath the hood, I love seeing that name hand-built. Both of these are hand-assembled engines and that Ford Performance on the strut tower braces. But why don't we get to one of the best parts, let's fire up these two Shelbys and see what they sound like. Right, guys we're inside the 2020 shelby gt350r i know you're at that point where you're like joe this car is badass how much is it msrp is seventy-seven thousand nine hundred dollars let's see what you get for the money now on the r you're going to get alcantara with that beautiful red contrast stitching leatherette material on the armrest everything else is standard affair and you do have a pocket down there for a piece of pumpkin pie and a hot dog because this car is all Americana. You got your chassis plate number with the GT50, uh, GT350R badge, carbon fiber. This is an optional carbon fiber piece, optional B&O sound system and the tech package. That's your eight inch sync three system with navigation. You have your AC controls. If you don't wanna to touch the screen, you could touch all the buttons. You have your radio controls and your AC controls, the toggle switches, like you're in a P51 Mustang, you got launch control. This is where you're gonna put all those pink slips as you beat people around your favorite racetrack. 12 volt and a USB, and then this is the little piece of hut heaven. Six speed, short throws, nice crisp engagement, wait until we take it for a spin. Good old fashioned e-brake, soft on the armrest. Where I'm zonking is, is look, they did the red stitching, what is going on here? Why is there black stitching? It should be all red stitching on a GT350R, so I am zonking that. Open this up. You got your race winning Twinkies ready to go, USB and another 12 volt. And then these Recaros are a piece of race car heaven. You got the R embroidery, Alcantara, Recaro badging. They're manual for both the passenger and the driver. 
and then on the R, there's no rear seat. It is a rear seat delete. That's gonna help save weight. Tons of headroom in here though to get your helmet on, but come on over to the business end. I wanna show you behind the wheel of this GT350R. All right guys, business end, behind the wheel of the GT350R. You got that Ford Performance badge welcoming you. You got the brushed aluminum pedals, three pedals, clutch, brake, and gas as it should be, or I should say throttle. Steering wheel is a piece of race car heaven. Flat bottom, red stitching. You got that Cobra steering at you. I I'll let it bite me, I don't care. Put the Venom in me. On the GT350, what I personally love is you're gonna get your analog tack, analog speedometer. In the center, you have your uh, different displays that you could do, tons of different readouts, even different gauges. Watch this, you go into gauge mode, we could toggle down. Look at this, you want transmission oil temp? Bam, you get a gauge for it. So I love that. Everything in here is nice and dark, so there's not a lot of glare. The Alcantara, everything is so beautiful. But why don't we go ahead, let's get inside that GT500 and see how different it is. All right, guys, we're inside the GT500. I know you're probably saying, well, Joe, if this is the most powerful production Ford vehicle ever, it must have a powerful price. MSRP is $82,500. Let's see what you get for the money. Now, the door panels are the same. The only difference is you're gonna get the leather material against the bottom and the dark stripe and the white stripe with the white contrast stitching. You still get that same great pocket there. Fill it up with apple pie. Maybe throw in a bottle of milk because you're not rowing through your gears in this one. But when you get to the dash, you have your GT500 badge, the chassis number. This one has that same carbon fiber the auxiliary gauges, oil pressure, oil temp, that eight inch uh, sync system, B&O sound system with the tech package, same AC controls, watch. There's your AC controls, radio controls, actual AC buttons, and then you also get your toggle switches. Put all of those pink slips from the cars you're taking from people right here. 12 volt USB, this I'm gonna zonk. This is that rotary dial for the seven speed DCT. It, it just doesn't look very attractive. Also, this black plastic, I wish they would have done something a little different. I am gonna zonk that. Two cup holders, you get the same key fob. So you see this key fob? Same key fob on the GT350R. Spin it around, there's your buttons. I like the way they brought the striping over here. White contrast stitching. Still though, they didn't do the white stitching, so I am zonking that. It's like they do the white where they want to and when they don't want to. Figure that one out. Open this up. Of course, you could put your race winning Twinkies in there, USB and a 12 volt. And then, whoops, these seats are also a piece of race car heaven. I love the Shelby embroidery, the Cobra, Recaro badging. These are an option. And you know what? They're worth it. Nice bolstering, nothing too crazy. Lots of headroom, just like the GT350R. But why don't you come on over behind the business end? We'll see what's different with the 500. All right, guys, business end. You got the Ford Performance badge, just like the GT350R, because this is a Ford Performance product. You have your two pedals, no clutch, just a brushed aluminum brake and throttle. Same great steering wheel, flat bottom, flat bottom. They brought in the white instead of the red. I love the white contrast stitching, the Alcantara, that same beautiful Cobra, just let it bite me again. Magnesium paddles on the back of the steering wheel. You could adjust your suspension, your steering, just like in the GT350R. This though, on the 500 is unique. It's got the same 12 inch display. You could option into a Mustang GT. You adjust it and then you could see how you go from normal to sport and everything changes very nicely like that. Super clean. It really is up to you whether you want analog or that beautiful LED display. Same amount of room, same layout, but if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get to the best freaking part of this review. Let's take these two Shelbys for a spin. All right, guys, we're starting off in my personal favorite, the Shelby GT350 R Edition. Every time I get in here, I feel like Cinderella because I'm putting on the glass slipper and it fits me to a T. Looking out over that hood, seeing the racing stripes is glorious, but you know what's more glorious? that voodoo engine. Here we go, second gear, the sound. Wow, oh my God. Every time I drive one of these, I don't even want to tell you what I'm doing. So what's happening on the insides, but uh, definitely you feel so connected. The Recaros, 
for some they would say they're tight but they feel perfect they really do not as aggressive as the recaros that were in the rs that focus rs i used to have the clutch pedal is so wonderfully balanced it's not too light it's not too heavy it's like goldilocks and the three bears engineered that foot box because you have a good dead pedal that's just perfect but then that clutch has perfect modulation and pickup point looking out in the rearview mirror what i love is you just see a big huge wing remember that's that carbon fiber rear spoiler they painted black but it is carbon fiber unique only to the gt350r gt350 does not have that and the gt500 does not have that steering wheel that alcantara wrapped with the bright red stripe top dead center pulling away easy peasy feels good here we go wonderful now remember with the gt350r no resonators it's a resonator delete going to give you a little bit more of that glorious sound that glorious rumble sits lower it's the lowest sitting out of the gt350 family and the gt500 family that's even with that carbon fiber uh performance package it still sits lower that large front splitter looking out across the hood the visibility is great yeah you can't really see much because of the wing behind you but you know what you should be looking forward because that's where you're going let all those other people behind you worry about smoking on your fumes and just trying to keep up with you because that's the wonderful thing is this car is so balanced 3700 pounds you got the upgraded magna ride suspension that is specifically track tuned but as you can see you could drive it on the street just fine those massive 315s out back wrapped around those carbon fiber wheels lowering that rotating mass and the tremec the tremec six speed is probably one of the best manual transmissions i've ever driven and yes the gt500 has the new tremec uh, that's the seven speed dct which is a fast shifting transmission but this thing in this car is a hot knife through butter here we go merge on the highway that's just fourth gear just get up the speed very nicely super smooth seriously every time i get into one of these gt350s whether it's an r or a standard gt350 i feel right at home i really feel just totally comfortable ready to attack any twisty turn whatever's going to happen that's how perfect this car is to me and that's why uh, i can't wait to get my gt350 all right guys we're in the gt350 here keep pulling out i want to get to a little bit of a twisty bend to kind of showcase the handling capability of this car because that's really where it comes into its own the voodoo engine that 8250 rpm red line and a chassis that is like no other remember we have that rear seat delete to help shave some of that weight this does have the suspension bits off of the gt500 for 2020 your 2019 doesn't have that and definitely nothing older than that either all right, guys, here we go. First gear on throttle in a second. Feeling good. Turn in is nice. We're going to warm it up a little bit here. Rolling on throttle, rolling on throttle. Here we go. The sound, the sensation, the way that you're connected to this car. It's almost like you're not putting your seatbelt on. It's like you're strapping your brain just hardwiring it to the steering to the throttle because the sensations are spot on that when you think it this car is already doing it the steering feels great that magna ride suspension soaks up the bumps but then also gives you the right damping in the corners to where you're going to be able to really feel good as you're going through the twisty bits that's the the magic in this vehicle right, guys here we go on throttle on the brakes downshift really good here we go the front end grip is phenomenal rolling on throttle trailing out yeah here we go nice <laughs> this thing <sighs> we haven't been in the gt500 yet the gt500 i already know is going to be faster but i'm telling you right now feedback in a corner 
and going through that six speed Tremec is just a thing of beauty and you owe it to yourself. If you could get one of these, go for it because it is an incredible, incredible experience. Just the sound is ridiculous. Downshift, second gear, feeling good. Look at this, here we go. Round and round and round, here we go. Let it drift out a little bit on throttle. and take the GT500 for a spin. Now, how often can you say that? So let's take this GT350R back and go get the 500. But before we do, let's see how we handle here. That amazing drive in the GT350R is still fresh in my mind. We're in the GT500. We're pulling out from Walker Ford. I have it in manual shift mode. First gear, of course. On throttle, here we go. <laughs> the fast shift from that Tremec transmission, and you have those massive bright red six piston Brembo calipers slowing you down. You could shed the speed very, very quickly. Now, like we've pointed out earlier, this is the most powerful Ford production vehicle ever built. You have a Ford GT in your garage? Lucky you, but guess what? This has over 100 more horsepower than your Ford GT, your new Ford GT. One thing I like right off the bat is, of course, that Alcantara wrap steering wheel and the magnesium paddles. So very, very nice. Instead of having plastic paddles, you have a nice, large magnesium paddle. This has the LED dash, very crisp, very clear, looking out, seeing that massive heat extractor on the hood. The bright grabber lime color really grabs your attention. The sound is just amazing. But super smooth, that's the wonderful thing, is that this car, even more so than the GT350R, the GT350R is gonna be more of a challenge to really drive on a regular, regular basis, should I dare say, daily basis. This car, you could have as your daily driver. I mean, it's, it's that much more comfortable, that much more um, usable and user-friendly. Obviously, sitting in traffic, if you have a lot of traffic in your area, having the seven-speed, Tremec DCT transmission is gonna be uh, better for your left leg, but for me, there's just no substitute for that GT350R. I do like the carbon fiber. I love the way everything is laid out here. What I don't like, and I'm gonna zonk again, is this center console area. I wish they could have just created some type of different material to put there. And I think at this price point, a little carbon fiber wouldn't have been bad. I'm sure there's a lot of people that would have optioned Besides on the dash option, 400 bucks. I'd pay 400 bucks to have this in carbon fiber. I think that would be money well spent on just an aesthetic standpoint. Um, looking out over the hood, you have great visibility. The wing in the GT500 is nearly not as high as in the GT350R. And of course, you're not on those Cup 2s. Remember those Cup 2s? You're maybe gonna get 10,000 miles out of them. These, with the 4S's, the, the, the Cup 4S's, excuse me, the Sport, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's, you're gonna get a little bit more livability. And when I say livability, more life out of the tires. Unless you have that one right foot that just loves spinning the rear tires. But sitting here with the AC on, purrs like a kitty cat. All right guys, pulling away from the light, very, very smooth. Another thing I'm gonna zonk that I'm missing is I need some supercharger wine. We have a supercharger on this GT500. I don't really hear it. Just a little wine would be nice. Of course, we have Florida drivers that even in the grabber lime color, they don't see it. So one of those things, but let's see how it is to merge on the highway. Getting on throttle, real easy, super smooth. I mean, you're up to a speed where they're gonna lock you up and throw away the key. 
That's how fast 760 horsepower is in this supercharged Shelby GT500. But as you can see, we're driving down the highway, the Magna Ride suspension, just like in the GT350R. It was a little bit more of a harsh ride in the GT350R. This soaks up the bumps a little bit more, but you are still gonna get that great handling once you get to the twisty bits. And that's the wonderful thing about this car. Grabber Lime, I think it's cool. I don't know if I can live with this every single day, but I'm sure for a lot of people, this really is the color of choice. It's a new color for 2020. You could even get it on your Mustang GT if you wanted to. But steering has a nice weight to it. The paddles are a great size. And those calipers the size of Michael Jordan shoes are going to just shed the speed very, very quickly. Love, I do love the way it downshifts on throttle, on the brakes, feeling good. Turning is nice. Look at this. Nice solid line all the way around. Be a little gingerly with the throttle and we're off. Fast shifts. Great sound. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Down shifts are the same crispness. Very fast. Very smooth. And that's the thing that over the GT350R you're going to get in the 500 are those fast very fast shifts. All right, guys, into this left-hand turn. First gear on throttle, second gear on the brakes. Turning is nice, look at this. She bites really good, let her run out a little bit. Apex down, rolling on throttles, shifting. Sound is just phenomenal, it's phenomenal. This car, it just does everything so efficiently. And that's the thing you're gonna get with that Tremec the seven speed DCT is that you're never gonna be able to outshift this thing, but very, very balanced. And this is not the one with the cup twos. You go that carbon fiber competition package, you're gonna get the cup twos and that's gonna allow you to stick even greater than this. But the feedback, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. It's the first time driving the standard GT500. Feels really, really great. On throttle, here we go. It's like launching a missile. Unbelievable. They really did their homework at Ford to have such a balanced car. Sure, does the Red Eye, the Challenger Hellcat Red Eye have more horsepower? Sure, but this thing will outhandle that car any day of the week and 20 times on Sunday. So just something to be aware about that, yes, there are some cars out there with more horsepower, if you could imagine that, but from a handling standpoint, plus the power, you're getting both with this GT500. And that's what makes it such an incredible car. Right, guys, on throttle, second gear, on the brakes. I could do this all day long. Feels great, great feedback, yeah. Yeah, so smooth. And like I said, the shifter is just so fast. God, but it just doesn't do it for me like the GT350R does. I think you'd agree just by from my reactions. It's amazing, I love it, I'm having a great time but my mind still, my heart still goes back to the GT350R. All right, guys, it's been another magical, masterful kind of day here at Walker Ford. Definitely gotta thank Frank Walker, Weston Walker, Tracy, Benji, Mark, Austin, Greg, the whole crew, two Shelbys in one review. Boy, did I get spoiled on this one. You know where my heart is. You know where my soul is. I'm going GT350R all day long. But you know what? There's nothing denying that ultimate in performance of 760 supercharged horsepower. But the choice is really yours with your wallet. But if it's cars like these that you want to keep seeing get compared on Rady's Rides, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new and you're on your way out, hit the subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Rady's Rides family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, Click the link in the description. Get yourself some Radies Rise merch. Got to give it up to Big Guns McGee. Getting two Shelbys. His heart is with the Shelby GT350R. So that's two and O oh, Shelby GT350R versus GT500. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.